Tonight, I'm excited that we've got a new psychologist joining us, Megan from Launch Psychology, who's come tonight to talk to us about uh, supporting parents during COVID. But before we get started, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands on which we're meeting tonight and to pay my respects to elders, both past, present and emerging. So welcome, Megan. Thank you for joining us this evening. Oh, thank you for having me. It's um, very exciting. We love having um, the team from Launch Psychology come on the show. So it's great to have you on tonight. What have you um, seen through your work over the last well, six months in Victoria? Yes. Um, some of the challenges that uh, parents and children have been facing. It's been um, particularly hard, I think, especially the last few weeks as we kind of wind down or get ready to go back to normal life. So how have you found people managing Look, I think, um, I think there's definitely been some common themes that have come up, you know, depending on the child's ages and things like that. But, you know, I think what um, the main challenges have been for families in general, um, if you want me to start broad, I guess, is that um, we've kind of been stripped of our, our resources, I guess, to, to, to cope day to day. So, you know, we've been in lockdown for, as you said, you know, nearly six months. And what we would normally be doing is having a routine, you know, knowing what's coming next in our day-to-day -day living. We would have extracurricular activities and social engagements and all of those things. And, you know, for um, parents to not have those outlets for their children has been really, really difficult, you know. Um, being with each other inside those four walls, you know, particularly if everyone's working from home and and schooling from home it's been um a, you know I think a really overwhelming experience you know and I think the challenge in that is that um and this is something I've sort of termed I guess as a bit of a theme for lots of families and a lot of my clients that I see is that um there's no kind of opportunity or there's been far less opportunities to miss each other so we're kind of living inside this one space with one another all the time and big feelings come out um you know and and we're not having as much opportunity to miss each other so you know I think that's definitely been one um, that I've sort of noticed for people um, and I think the other kind of really significant challenge you know with the whole working from home thing particularly with stage four coming into play is that you know the home environment is not now just the sanctuary where you come home after work and you unwind and you kick your shoes off and and all of those things it is now the home office the play space the leisure and relaxation space the quiet space you know all of those things um, and I think for parents in particular it's been really really, really tricky, um, changing hats all the time, you know, in one moment, you're, you've got your mama hat on in the next moment, you've got your, your work hat on. And, um, I had recently written a blog post for launch psychology about this sort of topic, you know, that, um, we only have one head and we have many hats and sometimes it can feel like we're constantly changing them um, which can be really um, overwhelming and can cause quite a lot of stress and anxiety because we feel like we're you know in this um, this need to kind of keep going and doing doing things all the time you know um, and, and it takes a lot of mental effort to switch hats I think too. And have you found that the space people is um, living in that inability to kind of change spaces because we're working and living and studying and doing everything has been a challenge for parents and families as well? I think so. You know, I think um, one of the things I've also noticed um, has been that there's no kind of transition between work and home or, or school and home. It's kind of on the kitchen table or in someone's bedroom or whatever. And, you know, you've got desks set up um, next to the kitchen table or next to the bed. And there's just there's a real enmeshment of all parts of our life. Um, and then, yeah, that, that we, we're not having that transition to, okay, close the laptop. I've got the commute home to switch off the brain and unwind and then come back into my dad mode or my parent mode, whatever it may be. Um, and I think that's been a real kind of struggle. And I think previously we may have thought that commute mode was really frustrating and annoying, yeah. <laughs> especially if the tram broke down or the train and you were stuck. But um, for a lot of us now, I think having that downtime, whether it was to sit on your phone or listen to an iPod or read your book before you went home was really important. 
and that incidental exercise that we were doing as well, whether it's walking to the car or walking to work, um, it's all stopped. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think we're doing far less of that because, A, we kind of can't go that far. Um, but, yeah, and we don't have anywhere to be. So, um, you know, we're having to make much more of an effort to kind of do that exercise, which we know is so beneficial for us. But if we have no need to do it, I think, um, you know, for lots of people it has been a case of, right, well, I slack my, I slap my trackies on and I hit the work chair and then, okay, 5.30, I log off and I go get dinner sorted, you know, um, without doing much exercise at all. <laughs> I have to say it's only when I run webinars that this is how dressed up I get now. <laughs> Even for my day job, I've got my hair tied back in a jump. Yeah. So I have never <laughs> left the house without having my makeup done and now I'm really <laughs> have any makeup on. So that transition <sighs> to, to not doing much has um, been quite dangerous in a lot of ways. What have you found, yes. um, what are some of the strategies you found have worked really well for parents during this time? I, I think that um, because of the kind of same sameness that a lot of families are experiencing, myself included, I'm a parent, I'm, I'm in this boat with everyone, um, you know, there can be or there has been these, these moments of monotony, wow, we're on this wheel, we're doing the same thing all the time, you know, there's not much we can do, we can't go to the zoo, we're not able to go to the beach because it's not within my five kilometre radius, you know, all of the novelty and the, what I've been kind of calling with my clients, the spark a lot of that's been removed from us all those things that we look forward to so we've had to work really creatively I think um, to find the sparkle you know that's kind of been one of my my big tips for clients is find the sparkle in your day no matter how small it is um, because that's what we can focus our energy on you know and I think when we move away from that and we you know we get bogged down in there how long is this going to last and what's it all going to mean and you know um, and getting sort of bogged down in the stuff that isn't working well. Well, those are things that we don't really have much control over. So now it's about re refocusing on finding the sparkle, find the fun, you know. So um, little little tips and tricks that I've had for families are things like, um, you know, rearranging the furniture around in the lounge room, for example. So if the play space is the area where the children um, play, well then, you know, move things around, create novelty by, you know, um, switching the toys out. So rotating toys in and out, for example. Um, you know, the other novelty kind of ideas might be, you know, you have breakfast foods for dinner or you, you know, um, you just do something silly, something that creates that sparkle that's within our control you know um, you may not have wanted to do that messy play because you know you didn't have time when there was always you know football after school and this or that but now with that extra time you know I think um, we can do some of those things you know I've seen a lot of sourdough bread and food yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being put out through social yep. media yeah, find a new hobby. I think, um, and you've had Daniela come and speak with you through these series, and um, you know she may have mentioned these ideas about five ways to well-being, and one of them is kind of learning. So it could be learning a new skill, you know. And and for some, it's making sourdough bread. <laughs> Do you feel that some parents have felt that anxiety? Because I think when COVID first came out, it was you know, you're either in two camps, one, you're not going to do anything with this time or you're going to be super, super um, busy in educating yourself and making lots of sourdough bread. So do you think that that has caused anxiety with parents to try and um, keep up with that kind of philosophy of you've got to do lots of things because we're in lockdown and we wouldn't normally be given this amount of time at home? Look, I hope it hasn't given them anxiety. I, for me, I feel like if we can go the reverse and think about um, uh, finding the pleasure in the slowness, you know, um, maybe going with that slowness because we live in such a fast paced world you know um i hope that there hasn't been anxiety about trying to cram more in but instead maybe slowing things down you know um because you can't race off and go and have a play date or a family outing um you know taking your time to do things you've got nowhere to be so make that time for that messy play or you know when you're going for that walk do it mindfully do it slowly engage your children in that 
yeah, so I, I hope it hasn't created too much anxiety. Maybe it's just for adults. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> <Without> children. <laughs> well, I think, I think we, we are in a world where we feel the pressure to make the most out of every moment. And, um, yeah, I think maybe kind of challenging that view and just kind of going, okay, let's slow it down. Let's go with the slow, you know, and, and take these moments in. Yes, I don't think we'll ever get a time. Hopefully we'll never get a time like this again in our lives. Yeah, yes. And you've talked, um, you talk a little bit about focusing on emotional buckets for parents. Can you explain a little bit about what that concept means? Yeah, sure. So in my work with my clients, I often talk about this idea that, um, you know, in order to be good for our, for our children, for our babies, we all have, you know, this emotional bucket. So if we imagine a bucket for ourselves and there are things that we can tip into our bucket that fill up our emotional capacity, you know, so the more kind of fulfilled we feel in, in terms of the things that we can do that fill us up as adults, because we have needs still as parents, you know, that if we can fill up that emotional bucket then when we kind of tip that into our children's bucket we've got something we've got reserves we've got stores to kind of draw upon you know and I think um you know at the moment you know lots of people are experiencing this sort of COVID restriction fatigue you know oh I, I can't be creative with my kids anymore I, I don't know what else to do you know and um and I think there is a real importance in knowing when you're feeling a bit fatigued or a bit burnt out and figuring out, you know, what is important for you that fills your cup up? Is it about making sure that you're sitting down and eating your meal with a knife and fork, you know, and if you've got little kids, you don't often get to do that. So, you know, can I carve out time for myself? And I think that's another huge tip that I've been talking with people about is, um, you know, to fill that emotional bucket, you might need to set up a bit of a plan even with your partner, if you have one around, right, it's really important for me that I, I get to exercise a couple of times a week. So when would it work for you so that I could sub that in? Is it in the morning before your 9.30 meeting? Is it, you know, um, once the kids are asleep, um, how can we kind of support each other to fill up our emotional buckets, you know? And coming back to hobbies and interests and what's important to you. That sounds like um, a lot more compromise when you've got children and homeschooling involved than when it's just yeah. one or two of you in the household. Have couples found and families found that compromise to be challenging, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, are you talking about the compromise to support one another? Or? Yeah, like fitting, um, fitting your walk in while your partner's looking after the children or, you know, squeezing in, doing the emotional bucket filling. Yeah. It, it takes some compromise, doesn't it, to ensure that everyone's buckets are full as yeah. often as possible. I think if you can kind of find ways to align routines, so let's say that there's maybe a child that naps in, you know, in the middle of the day in the household, you know, well, maybe dad goes out and has his run then so that it's less strain for the other parent to look after the, the other children or whatever. Um, and that's how we kind of compromise and support one another, you know, um, you know, making a regular time during the week perhaps could be something that you could do where Saturday mornings is mum time. She gets to do what she wants to do for an hour. Um, you know, little things like um, maybe if both of you want to sleep in on the weekend, Saturday mornings is when dad gets to sleep in and we don't wake him up before nine o'clock and the same goes for mum. Or if, if people are not kind of needing that extra sleep that that time is is for them to exercise to read a book to have a shower and you know do what they want to do that fills up their cup their emotional bucket I guess <laughs> well it depends if you've got a cup or a bucket we yeah yours, that's we right have, yeah we all need a bucket, I think, right now, don't we? <laughs> yes we all need a bucket <laughs> <laughs> a few of them <laughs> have yeah. you um, had parents worried about the transition back into whatever normal life is going to be like I know in other states it sounds like they've pretty much gone back to what life was like really which is, has surprised me but do you think there's an anxiety around going back or do you think everyone's just super excited that their children will be back at school or kinder or daycare <laughs> <laughs> they can work seen, from home in peace <laughs> yeah yes well I've definitely seen a few um a few little animations and gifts you know floating around the social media world about you know parents dropping their kids off at school and daycare and you know um, being pretty excited about that I think there is um some anxiety both for children and for parents you know for little ones for example you know they've had 
this beautiful amount of time with their parents at home and then, you know, in a few weeks or if it hasn't already started, you know, they're returning back to childcare and kinder. And so we would probably anticipate a little bit of worry or, or a little bit of apprehension around that um, for children, for example. Um, you know, and it might be about um, that, that slow kind of return to a, a COVID normal, as, as they're calling it, maybe kind of preparing and planning for that. So thinking about, okay, in a few weeks' time, we've got the kids going back to school. One of us is a permitted worker, so they're going to be racing off to work. And, you know, we haven't had to rush anywhere and, and coordinate drop-offs and pickups and bits and pieces. So maybe we can, we can kind of slowly get back to building that into our routine and kind of keeping that in mind as you're approaching, you know, the start date of school or, or childcare, for example. You know, um, can, can the children be involved in that? Can they be, you know, getting their bags ready and, and, and planning for that return? And um, maybe even just have initially having conversations about that. So, you know, you're going to be going back to school in a couple of weeks. You know, are you excited? How are you feeling about that? You know, and um, opening up those conversations with your children will help you understand where their mind's at. And then you can respond accordingly. If they're, you know, saying, oh, I can't wait to meet my friend Johnny on the playground. We're going to kick the footy and it's going to be awesome. You know that there's excitement there. But there might also be some apprehension, you know, um, about that because, you know, that for a large portion of this year, children have been at home, you know. Yes, it was um, at the start when it wasn't so restricted because my nephews live on the same street as me. It was a real privilege to be able to spend that time with them that normally we wouldn't get to. But at the same time, it's really sad because Jackson was um, starting prep. And so the disruption that it's caused for preppies and um, yeah. grade sixes and year sevens is really quite distressing in a way, but he seems to be managing quite fine. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think the big transition years can be quite tricky. And I think there's been a lot of apprehension for, for parents around how will my child cope if they're in kindergarten this year? You know, that's meant to be that year for preparation for prep. And, um, you know, likewise, if they're, you know, in VCE, I mean, that's a really stressful um, time for adolescents, you know, and to have to really quickly adapt to learning online and having technological issues and not being able to kind of, um, you know, contact the teacher have all been things that have been really really tricky so so are there some key takeaways uh, for parents you think moving through from leaving lockdown going back to some normality that might help them with this transition um, out of COVID I think yeah conversations could be really good um, to start with um, about how, how everything's going to look different. I think the more you can anticipate for those things, the better you'll be able to manage them. Um, I think, you know, um, there will be a normal, but it will be a different normal, you know. So I think um, keeping that in mind. But I also think that one of the things that I've even been pondering is what have the parts, what have been the parts of um, being in restrictions and under lockdown that we've actually quite enjoyed, you know, the, you know I, and I return to that idea of that slowness. And can we incorporate some of that into um, our daily routines and our living when things do kind of return back to, to fast pace and full throttle. What are those values behind um, that time that we had together that we can try and um, inject into our usual routine when things go back to normal, I guess? And is it um, giving ourselves permission to say, no, we can't do that this weekend? <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> So it might be that all families are like, so. go, go and do sport, go and do other things, yes. get out of the house. I'm worried yes. that we might get into this phase where we don't, we're so <laughs> used to being in our houses that when we've got freedom, we might be like, oh, can we do that? Are we going to yes. leave the house? Yes, yes. Can I step outside of my 5K radius? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been so lovely talking to you tonight, Megan. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I'll just check on if we've got any questions coming through. It doesn't look like it at the yeah, moment. Sure. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we um, wrap up tonight? I think for me as well, um, in, it, in all of this, this, this really uh, strange time that we've been living in, I think, um, you know, wherever people are at at the moment, whether it's just um, feeling fatigue, anxiety, anticipation, excitement, um, whatever it may be, you know, um, being quite compassionate 
with themselves. You know, I think a lot of people have been juggling so much on their plate, whether it's working from home with little children at their feet or, you know, bouncing a little person on their lap whilst they're doing a Zoom meeting or, or whatever you know we have all done the best that we can with the resources that we've had so you know just being compassionate and kind to yourself um, around that I think that's a really nice way to end because I think we get so caught up in the moment sometimes we forget to give ourselves compassion and our loved ones compassion and just to take a step back and say this has actually been really hard and I think particularly yeah. the last month of um I've felt from everyone I've spoken to, particularly families, the challenges of this ongoing situation we're in and just um, giving us some time to yeah, give that compassion to each other. Yeah, yeah, this is a major life sort of event, you know, um, and adjustment takes time. So, um, you know, with the transition into lockdown, there'll be a transition pa phase out of it, you know, and things will change and feel different and feel a bit weird. Um, there might be apprehension about getting back out there in case things happen and we have to kind of come back to this. So there might be some caution there, but, you know, um, yeah, I think uh, just taking it day by day, moment to moment, you know, being as mindful as you can will, will kind of help through that process. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. We've had some great comments. So thank you to those that have watched this evening and left some comments. And thank you for giving us your precious time, especially at the moment. And we look forward to um, having another conversation with you again uh, in the future. Oh, thank you. That would be lovely.